Resident Evil 6. Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again, introducing you to my Resident Evil 6 professional difficulty video walkthrough. This is the section, the section? This is the second section, sorry, to chapter 3. And we are continuing on this, this co-op path through the undergrounds, which is actually significantly easier with the AI because they cannot die. So all the pressure is on yourself, and if you're competent, you shouldn't have any real issue with this section. So instead, we have some light entertainment in the form of me and my girlfriend talking about shit. So in the last conversation, we were on about the, the core audiences for gaming and what the industry thinks people are or thinks that these people do. And we're just going to continue on that, basically. Because you made the statement that you would probably be considered a hardcore gamer by those standards. Well, not by those standards currently, but if I tried. No, but... Because like, I don't have a Yeah, but if you, if you think about what you do on your phone, that's still playing a game. So oh. all the time you log on, like, bedazzled and Angry Birds <laughs> and stuff, and, and, like, put the fucking coloured shapes together and form a square thing, you probably have invested a lot of time into gaming. Yeah, but then I don't consider that gaming. <laughs> exactly. I don't consider that gaming either because of the nature of it, but a lot of people do. Mm. It's like MMOs. I don't think MMOs are games. I think an MMO is just a, a, an IV to your wallet and your time. Yeah. I think those sort of become more a way of life, though, don't they? Yeah, they do. They're, they're an experience. It's like a culture. You can't separate yourself as much from that. It's there's no end to it, feasibly, because it's constantly trying to keep you on the hook. It's like crack. It's a, it's a keyboard with crack in it. You press a button, a bit of crack comes out, and you feel nice. No, but any any kind of experience you can get, be it digitally, that lets you neglect your infant baby, is pretty rough. That is pretty rough, but I don't think... Every single person that plays MMOs is neglecting their infant children. Oh, no doubt. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, you know, maybe if it was Peggle, they'd have got to the end, and they might have gone, oh, I should probably feed the kid. Because <laughs> it's not train spotting, you know. Well, we're not all getting high on heroin and laying around some scruffy house, and then we suddenly realise, oh, kid's dead. <laughs> I had a different image. I thought you meant actual train spotting. Oh no. Do you think real train spotters call themselves train spotters? Yes. Even after train spotting? I live with a train spotter. Does he call himself a train spotter? Yes. Or a the correct a trainer? Term, trainer? No. Train man? Feral equinologist. Oh my god, who knows that word? Which I think it's kind of cool. It means iron horse. That is kind of cool, but you should not know that word. Feral equinologist, yeah. I wow! Does he say he's one of them? Um, he doesn't often refer to himself in the third person. So <laughs> when I'm training. So I don't particularly know. He'll, he'll say that he's going down to the station, and we all know what for. So it, drug deal. <laughs> <laughs> he likes coke. No, um, but if he puts... Because a lot of people that he has on Twitter, because I follow him on Twitter... Um, a lot of the people that he does is, is his railway buddies. Um, he'll tag it with like train or feral equo knowledge stuff. Wow. I can't imagine being that interested about something like that. But I'm fascinated that other people are. Well, then he would possibly say the same thing about you playing games. Yeah, but games are amazing. <laughs> trains, are, trains are amazing, but not to watch. I don't know. Well, he... I don't particularly Do get it, but he's published. He's got books and stuff on it, and he's published in train stuff. Yeah, wow. He's published. He works on his, his own railway. He's he's now the associate editor of a new magazine that's coming out. Um, Motherfucker. A lot of his photography and stuff gets put in proper these the really big train magazines. And so how's he done that then? Is it just literally his enthusiasm and his willingness to be involved? Yeah, I mean he works. On a, on a train line back home. It's one of the mini ones, you know, where you get on and off and touristy bit and then. Yeah. Like runs in a circle every 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So he works there and it's just like this, hard work and he's 
booklets as well. That is amazing, that though, because to to anybody, well, not to anybody else, but to to, to a normal person looking at something like a train, you you think a necessity. You think a machine that takes me to a place I need to go. You don't think of the journey. You don't think of the the, the intricacies. You don't think of it ever being anything that looks or they can get you that excited. I think the ma to kind of side note it. I think the majority of the stuff that he would go to see or take photographs of or write articles on are the specialised stuff. It's like steam trains or like the ones that look nicer than I Northern Rail Barnsley to leave. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he's standing taking pictures of that in cold, but... Well, I mean, there's some new trains that look all spot on, like the bullet oh, trains like and stuff. The other week he went to he went to the station um, because it was the first time this certain train had been run on a certain line. And he knew that if he got pictures of it, it would be in a... Somewhere in a magazine it would be written about and he could submit photos and possibly get... Cool. ...them published. So I think it's kind of means to an end as well but it's cool though i mean it makes me wish i <laughs> there was stuff like that for games even though all the gaming magazine stuff nowadays is literally dying because of the internet it. because you know people have got this affinity towards trees which pisses me off to no end because this is a good a a tangent actually this game has a manual that is about two pages long <laughs> two pages long and it tells you nothing about the game. So much so that you learn most of the things about this through the loading screen, little tool tips. Yeah. Stuff that should have been in the manual, but it's not there. And a lot of companies nowadays do digital manuals. I don't think this one does. I just think they, they, they fucked you with the manual. And if you think about it, how many papers get printed every day? If you're wanting to save paper, ban fucking... Paper people, don't don't give us two pages of something that probably got printed a million times, so it doesn't make a difference. I kind of wonder as well whether it's the nature of the thing itself, as in games, because it's more, I don't want to say more technologically advanced, because obviously transport and things is getting to that state, but whether because the people that are interested in this sort of thing would rather buy the magazine than read it online. Yeah. If, for the most part, and I'm saying this not... Um, biasedly because I know from my friend that a lot of the people that are interested in this are older yeah. they would prefer to buy a magazine rather than have to search through Definitely. pages of websites whereas people that are interested in games are more adept at using the internet yeah. I'm going to have to interrupt you here, my queen for anybody that wonders what the hell just happened in that insane free for all that just happened I'm running past all these areas, A, to save ammo, but more to save patience, because it's, it's easier to run than it is to kill everything, because there's a lot of enemies, and I got myself into a spot of bother because they blocked me off, and I had a fat guy, I had the skinless guys, I had a shrieker, I had a ton of stuff, and all you need to do, guys, is, is be, you know, keep your cool, weave between them, kite them as best you can, see your openings, get out of there, and uh, you shouldn't have too much issue with this, but if you're watching it wondering what the fuck is going on, just know I was thinking the exact same thing when it was happening. Not to mention the um, other guy flinging himself off the bridge halfway through that. Oh, they do it all the time. But going back to what you were saying, if I get a magazine, I will read every single character in that magazine from front to back, and I'll worship it. It might take me a couple of days, it might take me a couple of weeks, but you know, just the process of sitting down with a magazine... I love it. I, I love it to death. On the internet, I've got all that information and I can't be asked to read it. I just don't. I'll read maybe one thing, I'll be in a super good reading mood, and then I'm done. I can't do it. And I don't know why. I don't know what the difference is. I don't know what the disconnect is between having something palpable that I like to read and having an, an ocean of information in front of me, and then I don't know what to click. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? It's really strange. I'm say I bought my first magazine the other day, and it felt bizarre. Because I've not bought a magazine in Asia. Crappy girl magazine, but... I'm but it's, it's something you like. Only because Christina Hendricks was on the cover, and she's fit. Christina Hendricks is pretty fit. I think I'd have bought that magazine just for the pictures. <laughs> but it's, it's strange, because I would never want publications of things to stop, purely based on the fact that we're going green now. We don't need this excess yeah. paper. 
when we all know if they just endorse hemp, which is better at doing what paper does and easier to make, we, we did fix this fucking solution, but there's, there's too many people with investments in it. So they make up bullshit stories about how there's cannabinoids in hemp and they make it illegal because it's somehow associated with a drug when it gives you absolutely no drug at all. It's just the toughest, most durable, most flexible, most awesome piece of fucking anything ever. God damn it. <laughs> but... It's not fucking... Oh. Oh. You just, just research hemp if you've never looked into it. The stuff is amazing, but because it had put a lot of people out of business, nobody wants you to know how good it is and they want you to make... They want to demonise it and make you think it has something to do with this terrible drug war that's being waged right now. Which is essentially a bunch of people wanting to see through the bullshit that organised government's laying on them. But we're, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll cut, it, cut, cut it there. But trains. Trains are awesome. I like trains a lot. Yes, but I've been to the Railway Museum in York a lot of times and I love it. And I'm not even that interested. I just can't imagine, you know, calling myself a one of them and if there are any people out there that do it and I've said that wrong I apologise but that's what I lose well it's, it's 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 cool whatever it is and there can't be that many of them it must be you know a pretty tightly knit group of folk I, I said not that many in the grand scheme of you know people that like David Beckham <laughs> which I think is cool to be a part of something because I look at it like something like Dark Souls community there's a pretty healthy community of Dark Souls, but in the grand scheme of gaming, it's you know it's like a it's, it's like a Ferrero Rocher <laughs> next to a, a big bar of Galaxy, and uh, if you don't have that chocolate in your country, then that's not going to mean shit. But if you're wondering why this video is taking so long, I'm supposed to be shooting the enemies to help her use the winch to to lower the bridge. I didn't want to do it because I wanted to save my ammo, but towards the end of this I realised she ain't going to get shit done until I, I support her a little bit. And she does have infinite ammo, so if you don't want to waste anything, just wait, but it'll take quite some time. And if you're going for the S rank, you're probably not going to get it. But have you got any like, you know, group that you can associate with that's, that's linked to a passion or an interest that not people, not many people know that you've got? Am I allowed to say linguistics? Yeah, linguistics is definitely one. That probably feels like a big group of people. All of you sat at your own table looking at language <laughs> from a completely different view. Yeah. And it's weird because I've sort yeah. of surrounded myself with these people without actually noticing because four, three of the people I live with are also studying linguistics. Yeah. Four of the people on my roller derby team are also ling linguists. Yeah. And three of which are a lot higher than me. So one of them's doing a PhD, one of them's doing a master's. So it's like... And these are people that analyse literally the shape of a mouth, the, the, <laughs> the angle of a tongue that makes a noise. It's This is language on a whole new level. For people that can't quite understand, you know, E-I-R and E-R-E, -E, this is much higher than <laughs> that. So Just ridiculous scopes and depths of language. It's fun being able to nerd out with them. When yeah, definitely. And not even particularly on academic subjects, but for example, when I went to the baby shower uh, the other week with the roller derby girls, being able to tell Kim that my dissertation might get published and her, although normal other people can sort of go, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, but she, but she, she knows, knows exactly the field what that and is, she knows yeah. who I might be getting published with and who might read it, and so that's pretty cool. It's exciting. It's really exciting. But that is the end of the video, guys. So thanks for watching. I hope it's helping. And you take care now.